according to an investigation by the Daily Mail, practice across the country are selling aesthetic treatments, including lip fillers and Botox. It comes amid a worsening dental crisis with people struggling to get appointments to get their teeth checked. The number of NHS dentists working in England has dropped to the lowest level in almost a decade. And we know people have struggled to register and even resorted to DIY treatments at home. So we'd love to know what you think about them offering Botox. Um, Carol, uh, what do you think? I mean, I'm not looking at directly at you. I'm not going to ask if you've had Botox at a well, dentist. I have in the past. I haven't had it for ages. And, I, and there'll be people watching now say, my God, she needs it. And I'm going to get no. it probably quite soon. However, um, I think when you have people queuing around the block at 4am waiting because because they've got tooth ache or they need a tooth out and the dentist instead of using their time um, to do Botox, it's wrong. Now, I'm not saying that, that they shouldn't do it at all because I think dentists of all people understand the muscles in your face yeah. and all the rest. But we'll just have a look. I, I, it's really interesting you've brought it up. You know, demand for NHS yeah. dent dentistry in February two, uh, 2024 is what we can see on our screens yeah. now. Hundreds, hundreds of people queued outside a new dental practice in Bristol to register at an NHS as NHS patients. I mean, and that, that what do you make of that when you say it? Well, I say it, it is, it is astonishing. It's bad. It's terrible. However, I'll tell you what I, and I was, I'm probably going to get slaughtered for this. Um, I, I, I do think that, you know, the NHS dentists say they're, they're on pins. They're not. They're on between 47, 663 a year and 101,000 a year. That's not chicken feed. Uh, and you rec a newly qualified one is on about 37 grand. It's not chicken feed. However, I do understand that they, they need to, to get more money because the government has underfunded dentistry. However, um, couldn't there be a compromise? Couldn't they do one whole day a week doing Botox and fillers and the rest of the time doing the people who desperately, desperately need their, their teeth sorting out? The other thing I will say as well is that People in the future, because the, Na the National Health Service is not coping, so people in the future may have to see their teeth as a priority over holidays, over nights out, over other things, because there just isn't the money for dentistry now. There just isn't. Maybe there was years ago, but I, there isn't now. There's a new scheme the government... Can, can I it. bring, bring Daryl in here? You know, it, it, it found... There was a, sorry, the BBC investigation in 2022 found that the lack of NHS appointments had led people to drive hundreds of miles in search of treatment, right? Mm. We talked about do-it-yourself treatment. People are pulling out their own teeth without anaesthesia and resorting to making their own improvised dentures. I mean, that sounds Dickensian. Yeah, I mean, it's horrendous, uh, not just for the individual, but it's also horrendous for the NHS as well, by the way. Uh, tooth problems, the, uh, the, the, the most common reason that children are taken to mm. A&E, uh, mm. 20 million a year that costs the NHS because of this. And look, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here. And <laughs> forgive me, I'm gonna sound a little bit boring eventually, but are we surprised? I mean, we've lost 500 million in funding since 2015. They've got this horrendous contract which has been tweaked slightly, but nowhere near enough to, to solve the problem. Which, by the way, isn't this government's issue. This was a contract that was uh, established in 2006. It was a horrendous, horrendous idea, which basically meant that NHS treatment wasn't worth doing. But it's not. It's nothing to do with how much they pay. Well, one of the it's things the that dentists say, and we're going to come to it, because it's important to hear from uh, the horse's mouth or the dentist's mouth, um, is that what this does by providing aesthetic treatment is pay or enable them to take more NHS Patients, let's speak to dentist Dr. Milad Shadri. Milad, thanks for joining us today. Uh, you know, what do you think about dentists offering Botox? You saw those pictures of desperate people who were like sleeping overnight just simply to register themselves or their kids, often, you know, when they're in pain to get basic frontline dental treatment. Uh, good morning. And I just want to say everything that you guys have discussed, you, you've all basically nailed it. I mean, it, it, it is an issue with the contract. It, that's the reason why NHS dentistry is so difficult to, to access. People, I think, forget that, yes, it's healthcare, but it's still a business. We do have to run a business. We have to we have, we have the same rules as every other business. And if we don't make a profit, that business closes. And unfortunately, the NHS contract just doesn't allow you to run a sustainable business. So you have to supplement that with private treatments. And it's not just facial aesthetics, it's private dentistry. Almost every NHS clinic out there that does still provide NHS dentistry will provide private dentistry as well because they have to. And doing facial aesthetics is just another part of it because we are one of the best clinicians there to do it because of everything that Carol said with the facial anatomy, with the fact we have a really clean environment, with the fact we're medically trained. And we don't sell Botox, we buy it. 
from pharmacies because it's a prescription only medication, which people forget also. And then we use it to provide a treatment, same as we buy all other dental materials at massive costs to still be able to provide Dr. treatment. Dr. Shadri, you, Dr. Shadri so you offer NHS dentistry for children, but the clinic yes. where you work stopped um, offering NHS uh, dentistry for adults. Uh, last year, and that was after 35 years. Was that because of the contracts? Absolutely, 100%. We just couldn't make it work anymore. We just could not make it work. And it's not that we, we had to reduce our contracts so, so much that it just wasn't viable to do it because we can't keep taking people on. And the way the contract runs is it's like buffet dentistry. Patients will pay one fee and then they can have as much of everything within that band of treatment as possible. And that's just can unsustainable. I, can, I, can I stop you there? Because I think this is a really important point. I bet people don't know this, that if you do one filling or five, you get the same amount of money, which I think is shocking and should change. Mm. You should get paid per Absolutely. Fill. Absolutely. And that's how it used to be before this contract came in in 2006. It was fee per item. Yeah. So if you need loads of things because there's been years of neglect or there's been years of not looking after your mouth, then you pay lots of fees to fix all of those things. Mm. Now, as you said, and it's not just five fillings, it could be a filling in every single tooth, an extraction of 10, oh. five root canals, what and about, you're going to pay £68. Pounds. What about Carol's point? You make quite a lot uh, doing Botox. Uh, not that I would know. I'm, you know, thanks to, I don't have, you know, anything in my face. I'm not a reliant on shares pioneering. You have a baby face. Thank you very much. Um, yes, but nevertheless, it is not cheap to get this stuff. Why isn't it the case that if you're making money doing that, you can then perhaps use that money to fund NHS treatment? You see, one thing about facial aesthetics is that it's always going to be private. Yeah, The NHS is not going to fund you to have no, I'm not suggesting. I'm suggesting the money that you make, the money you make, could be then ploughed into treat to treating the least privileged who are queuing around the block because they're in pain. Well, it often is because in order to keep an NH an NHS practice going, like I said earlier, you have to use this NH uh, the private income to supplement it, and that just keeps the building open. That just keeps the staff paid. That keeps the materials coming in. That pays for the tens of thousands of pounds we have to spend every year just to keep a practice open with the yeah. regulations, with everything that we yeah. have to do. Let's talk about the, what you would get for putting a crown on someone is 306 quid. <clears throat> Privately, you can get between 950 and 1200. In London, it would be 1200 for a crown. To get a tooth out on the National Health, 70 quid. Privately, 280. That's a crazy disparity, isn't it? I mean, they should at least meet you halfway, I think. But, but d tell me, do you think that people, you know, you mentioned about people neglecting their teeth. And this is a problem, I think, you know. Dara was talking about five-year-old kids b b having to go to hospital. That is parental neglect, isn't it? Well, isn't it? I think it comes down to... I mean, it, it's it's a lack of awareness a lot of the time for oh, certain. You, you know groups, how you've got to clean also, your teeth. No, people, I know, but no, I don't think so. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think very often these very often uh, issues with your teeth are things like infections. No, it doesn't. It doesn't kids it doesn't really aren't brushing. You, being, kids you aren't clean. being taught to brush their teeth. Keir Starmer has said he wants teachers to teach kids to brush their teeth. That that he'll make that a rule when he gets into power. It's crazy that you should have to tell a parent to brush their kids. He's not saying that that's their job to do that. Of course it is. Well, but, 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 but let's ask them. You, you see kids' uh, uh, teeth. Uh, is that the case or is the, the real problem, uh, just as it always was, sugary treats and all the rest of it, very quickly? Sugar is a massive part of it. But like I said, there is a lack of awareness of what to do. I hear still today, in this day and age, oh, they're baby teeth, they're just going to fall out. People don't put the importance onto it. And the fact that their children will have pain, the fact that if they lose baby teeth early affects their adult teeth, the failure to thrive, they can't eat properly, they have pain, they can't concentrate in school. They forget all of that because baby teeth are going to fall out. So no, we have to look after baby teeth. We have to improve our understanding of it. And I do think getting it into schools early is a great idea. Let's just hope they can do that and actually put some of that money, instead of gassing kids and putting their teeth out, let's put that money into educating everybody so it doesn't happen in the first right, place. But when things get wrong, the problem is they have to have access Access to uh, a dentist. Thanks for, for joining us. There was a statement made by Daisy Cooper MP, Lib Dem Health and Social Care spokesperson, who said something's gone terribly wrong if it's easier to get an appointment for cosmetic dental treatment than a checkup at your local NHS uh, dental surgery. Uh, do you think that, uh, that 
perhaps she has a, a point. Thanks, Milad, for joining us. Uh, after the break, we're taking your calls. Should we ban NHS dentists from selling Botox? Botox. Now we're talking about whether we should ban NHS dentists from selling Botox. Maybe you've struggled like thousands to get an appointment to get your teeth checked. Maybe you've done DIY dentistry at home. We'd love to hear from you. 0207 862 is the number you'll need. I'm gonna go first of all to Wiltshire. Erica, um, have you struggled to find a dentist? Um, no, because when I moved here, I was very lucky, right. and um, I um, I was all you know had an NHS dentist already, and I managed to get one when I came here. Um, but that is not the case now. My thirty-three-year-old son could not find an NHS dentist, and um, I really do think I don't care what they do with their time. I really do think though that they should maybe be contracted to two days a week for the NHS as we have presumably made them into dentists at our expense. Well, that used to, be, all, the that used to be the yeah. case, Erica. Um, you know, certainly when I went to university, it was all free. But uh, these days, to go to dental school, you have to pay. Mm -hmm. And a number of them are in uh, tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt. But I hear what you say, two days a week, they should have to commit to the NHS, right? That would be your plan. Oh, I think more than that, Erica. Oh. I, I think they should do one day a week for all the, the Botox and the whatever, because they would make thousands and thousands of pounds of that and spend the other four days doing people's teeth. I think that's actually kind of what they do do. And also, if you're, you know, if you're talking about signing, I mean, I think what, what you're also talking about there, Erica, is signing up people who currently engage in private work or who are private dentists uh, making a commitment to two days of the week the NHS. But we're, we're not fixing the business model. Unless we fix the business model, unless we make that pay, there's no way they can do that. I mean, it's financially crippling for them. Erica, can I ask you just a second? Obviously, you know, I'm not sure if you've told your son you're phoning in, uh, but nevertheless, no, no, that's fine. Um, but I wonder what it feels like to know that if something goes horribly wrong, a tooth pain, anybody that's had chronic toothache will tell you it is crippling Terrible. and horrible. It's worse than um, what do you feel? What does it do to you to know that if he ends up with some sort of dental crisis, he's not covered and it might cost him thousands and thousands of pounds to sort out? Well, it, obviously, it angers me and it upsets me. Um, it's like um, I'm quite, well, I've reached the age where I may lose a tooth. And if I did lose a tooth, I will be toothless forever because I could not afford even to get my NHS dentist to replace that tooth. You know, and I'm probably only talking about a few hundred pounds. Yeah. So, I, yeah, and I, but I can't see any answer to it because I'm afraid our current government won't do anything about this. And I don't really have any hope that Labour will either. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it a Labour government who changed the rules with the dentist yeah, anyway? Not. That's exactly right. Uh, the last question, you know, it's interesting that you say the new government doesn't look like they're making any meaningful change. It's perhaps just a new bunch of management consultants. Do you see, as you probably would have done, a picture of people queuing around the block just to sign up for yeah. an NHS dentist. What do you think, Erica? You're out there it, um, in the country. What do you think that says about Britain? It was absolutely awful. It was like watching something in a third world country where a dentist has arrived in the middle of some yeah. terribly, um, you know, deprived place. And, and I did notice, because it's impossible not to make judgments, but these people who are queuing, they didn't look like they were particularly affluent people either. So they've got no voice anyway. Right. Thanks, Erica. Now, Chris on Facebook says, NHS dentists, where? It's been a 10-year game of hide-and-seek and I can't find one. Rebecca also on Facebook says, NHS dentists are, are subsidised by the NHS. They can absolutely do whatever they want in their own practice. Imagine giving your boss the ability to curb your earning potential. No, you, think like, you also, I think it's fair to say, have a point about preventative Yeah, medicine. I do. I, I, I feel really strongly. I, I, when I hear that kids age five, the biggest, the biggest reason they go into hospital for operations is because of rotting teeth and they're, they're going in there to have them yanked out. I'm sorry, but, you know, that's because their parents haven't taught them to brush their teeth. And I do think, you know, we've got to, we've got to at some point take responsibility for our own bodies and what happens to them. And we've got to take responsibility for our teeth. And it stands to reason, if you don't brush the teeth, they're going to rot. And if you haven't told your kids to brush their teeth, 
their teeth are going to rot. And, and Millard said it before, you know, parents aren't getting the fact that their kids are in pain and if you don't look after the baby teeth, the second teeth are going to be affected. You have to take... We can't expect the government to do everything for us. And brushing your teeth is the simplest thing you can do to stop tooth decay. Well, I hear you, Darren. I think, I think, there's a I think there's a, there is a truth in that. I think it betrays the complexity of it. I struggled when I was a kid. I really struggled to brush my teeth. I, I, I You're hate kidding the me. sound... Yeah. Why? I, I, um, the sound of brushing goes through me. And, and it was... It was it was torture to brush my teeth when I was younger. And my mum, bless her, she tried absolutely everything that she could to make the process fun, to kind of... Think it. But I still I still ended up, you know, I still ended up with pretty bad teeth when I was younger. The issue is when people get to crisis point, and I admit that sometimes that is down to individuals not taking responsibility, individual parents. Again, I think it's more complex. You've you got to just, give people the tools in order to be able to do that kind of stuff. You just said it. Your mum yeah, tried she did. everything to make it fun because she knew how important but it's it was. But, but it's more complicated than that. It's it is not more that. complicated. It's not Your point, I, I think it's interesting, is that people, individuals, should take a responsibility. For that. And I don't think you just restrict that, it's fair to say, to, to Kit. I think the point you make is knowing that there is an NHS provision, people need to be uh, mindful of putting money aside. I think we're going to come to a point where people, if you, if you want to keep your teeth and not have dentures, what you've got to do, I think, and it's what I have done in the past when I couldn't get an NHS, you save. It's that old-fashioned concept of saving. So you might not go on as many holidays, you might not go out as many nights, but you put some money aside and have a little fund for your teeth because, God help us, we need them until we die. You're going to have them for 70, 80 years. I think there's one really big point that we're, that we're forgetting here, and that is that we're not dentists. Teeth are complicated. You can brush hard and brush well, and you get to the dentist, and all of a sudden you do a filling. I've had that on several occasions where I well, thought that my, my I thought that my oral health was good, yeah. and then I've got to the dentist, and it's much more complicated than that. It's all good and well saying that people have to take individual responsibility, but unless you know what's going on, unless you're trained to know what's going on in your mouth, you still rely on the professionals. Do you mind them the doing both? I have to say, you know, uh, we were discussing this earlier uh, before we came on air, and uh, one of our producers said her dentist only does teeth on Tuesdays and offers a aesthetic treatments the rest of the week That's and our deputy editor I'm not going to um, say her name uh, hi Katie um, <laughs> she says when she was having a, a treatment um, her dentist suggested at the end of the process that she came back for some aesthetic treatment <laughs> so she got her teeth done <laughs> and at the end of it she said well by the way um I should sort your frown lines. That's, what do you, that's, make, that's what do you very, make of that? that? That's very, very naughty. And actually, people who um, who are having these aesthetic treatments and trying to be with the NHS dentist, if you can afford 300 quid for Botox, you can afford a filling, bottom line. Well, that's uh, something yeah. to think of, but I... Yeah. Well, uh, no, wait, one final point. I've got to stop it's you there. Go on, very quickly. It's cosmetics or collapse for some of these people. That's the reality. Well, thank you for all your comments uh, on this. There's a number of you out there uh, on X and on Facebook. Keep calls coming in.